Most people think they're building with AI because they copied some N8N template of how to make baby podcast videos with no real business use case behind it, or built some very impractical million agent army that isn't even really effective. That's not building, that's using. And in 2026, that distinction is going to matter a lot. It's like they say, just follow the money. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Meta, spending over $300 billion combined on AI in 2025. Even the low-code development market is expected to explode from $28 billion in 2025 to over $260 billion by 2032. So the time is ripe, and if you're watching this video, odds are you want to be a builder, not just a user. So I'm going to break down the top five specific capabilities that you need to have moving into 2026. And I'm shocked that there aren't more people shouting from the rooftops about how people are going to need all of these. Because here's what nobody seems to want to say out loud. We're entering a very clear two-tier system. On one side, you have people that are learning how to use AI to like build and ship actual apps and companies. And on the other side, you have people that are just watching on the sidelines, letting that pile of great ideas gather even more dust. You have one group that's building internal tools that could save companies tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars. Then you have the other group that's just complaining about AI and wondering why they're not getting promoted. McKinsey estimates that 30% of all work hours will be automated by 2030. Bain says that 80% of workers face wage stagnation or displacement due to the rise of automation. So the question becomes, will AI replace you? No, but people who learn to work with AI systems will replace people that don't. Because automation doesn't eliminate work. We're not going to automate some work task and then kick back and sip on pina coladas in the sunshine. Automation eliminates people that cannot create new value. And that is an important difference. It does not eliminate work. It eliminates people who are unwilling to create things that other people need, whether that's through a company that you own or whether that's as a employee inside of a company. Can you leverage these tools to produce more value? Yes or no? When I started working with all of this AI stuff two and a half years ago, it was just about being more productive. But now it's causing an economic shift in terms of what one person can individually accomplish. And you want to be on the right side of that shift. So if you don't want to get caught with your pants down, you need to learn these five specific capabilities. Now, I've broken these down into two categories, builder skills and multiplier skills. Builder skills help you create things that you couldn't make before. Things that used to require hiring specialists or spending a lot of time, years, learning. Whereas multiplier skills help you scale what you already know how to do. So it takes work that used to take days or even weeks sometimes and compresses it down into hours. And the crazy part is that most people are focused on like one or two of these, let alone all five. So let's break down exactly what you need, starting with number one. Number one is AI-enabled app development. With tools like Cursor and Bolt and Lovable, it's never been easier for people to get started building software. That's why this is a builder skill. But here's what most people get wrong. They think that these tools are only for people that are trying to build some harebrained app company. But it's not only limited to building software companies. For example, last week I used Lovable to build an internal reporting tool for a client. I just passed Lovable the API docs for the tool, told it the type of report I wanted, and boom, multi-day project done in a few minutes. In the last month alone, I've built for myself an AI prompt management app, an AI powered YouTube insights tool for this channel, an interior design app to help with the remodel of my house. Each of these apps would have taken months to implement, let alone the learning that would have had to go in 
to understand each of those skill sets individually and how to apply them. And I had all three of them done in a few days, all 100% with AI systems. So whether you're the guy that gets shit done at work or you're the hopeful entrepreneur, AI-enabled app development is a critical skill. So the second builder skill, arguably the most underrated out of the five of these on this list, and this one drives me crazy that more people don't get it. AI-enhanced research and learning. Most people, when you look online, they see AI as this thing that is removing people's brains, right? There's all these memes flying around where people have to ask ChatGPT how to have basic conversations with other people because they can't do it themselves. My experience is the exact opposite of that. We can leverage AI to learn enough about a topic to build products and companies and prototypes for our own use at incredibly fast speeds. And there's a bunch of different tools that you can use to help you do this. Notebook LM from Google, Claude Deep Research, ChatGPT's ProGrade Research, Perplexity's Deep Research, all great tools that can help you get answers to questions very, very, very quickly and put it in a format where a language model can understand that topic and help you build toward the thing that you're trying to understand. I'll give you an example. A few months back, I wanted to create a personal training agent that could build me a personalized workout program, help me track my progress, and then make updates based on my feedback to the system about how things are going. The only problem, don't know about the principles of periodizing fitness plans properly, and I didn't know how to build production-ready agents. I learned enough in 48 hours about, number one, how to actually build fitness plans for people and all the different micro considerations within that, and how to actually build a multi-agent system using a tool like Crew AI that I was able to build that agent and use it in a weekend. That would have taken about three to six months with traditional learning, and I was able to have that information synthesized into a form that I could implement on it in no time. So in 2026, people that can use AI to learn three to five times faster are going to blow everyone else out of the water. But once we've mastered those builder skills, how do we get the most out of them? So the next three skills are multiplier skills. And the first one is context engineering. So the big thing circa 2024 was prompt engineering. You couldn't open up your Instagram feed or your Twitter feed or X feed or any feed without being inundated with people that were selling you packages of prompts. But that has largely died off because as these models have gotten more advanced, another concept has emerged as even more important than prompting. The new skill to master is context engineering, which is basically the ability to refine and optimize the information that you choose to give to the model based on the task you are trying to have it solve. So if prompt engineering was like a gas pedal, context engineering is like a steering wheel. It can simultaneously drive you into a ditch when done poorly, or can have you competing in NASCAR or Formula One when done really well. Because 80% of the battle is knowing what information the system actually needs at each point, and only 20% how to give it the information. Now that 80%, it used to be the realm of $300 per hour consultants. This is why industry insiders are predicting a 50% reduction in the profits of big four consulting companies over the next three to five years. Because people like you and me, when given these tools, can now accomplish tasks that used to take entire teams of experts many, many, many days, weeks, or months to compile. So again, the skill is, now that I have this massive information, how do I translate it in the best way possible into what the AI actually needs? So how do you learn this skill? Through building. Go out there and build a knowledge base. Try to take pieces of context from that knowledge base and get an output from it. See what breaks, see what works. Because once you nail context engineering, your AI outputs shift from mediocre to game changing. So number four is AI enhanced writing. Why did I include that on this list? 
the gutters of history are filled with the bodies of people that had exceptional ideas and exceptional talent that could not communicate that value to other people. So whether you want to succeed in the workplace or as an entrepreneur, you need to be able to communicate values and ideas effectively to people. In other words, you need to be able to persuade people in the workplace. Maybe that's convincing that HR rep why you deserve the $20,000 raise. As an entrepreneur, maybe it's how you choose to dimensionalize the benefits on your landing page so that people want to actually buy from you. Now from there, in steps a major problem with AI. It's trained mostly on public data and it's consumed nearly all of it. So why is that a problem? Imagine a complete dog poo of a pile of a Reddit thread trying to talk about what good copywriting is. But imagine that what the people are saying is actually objectively wrong. Well, AI doesn't really have context of what the mass of real conversions from software companies, for example, on their landing pages actually looks like. So what does it do? It guesses. That's why sourcing specific creators and writers and other people you trust and feeding their frameworks and values into the models is very, very, very important. So for copywriting, you might consider people like Eugene Swartz and Dan Kennedy using research to prompt the system and understand what are their principles, what are their values, and then leveraging that as the lens through which you actually write your copy or your message to your boss or whatever it might be. So as you can see with a skill like AI enabled writing, we're starting to combine multiple steps. How can I use AI powered research to understand a specific topic or do background research for a thesis or a point that I'm trying to make? How can I use context engineering to pull the most important insights out of that and forward it alongside examples of my writing to a language model in order to actually write me something, for example, about that topic? The power of these five skills is that the more you use each one, it builds onto the next and it becomes more and more and more powerful. Now, the last set of multiplier skills, automations and agent building. So this is really two related topics. Automation, where we just take a repeatable task and have a system do it. And agents, where we take questions or needs that need to actually be reasoned about or thought about and allow a autonomous system to execute on solving that problem for us based on the tools that we have given it access to. Now, automation, I think everybody and their mother is into automation right now, which is fine. It's a valuable skill to know. But agents will consume the world in the future. There's a quote from Mark Zuckerberg. So I think we're going to live in a world where there are going to be hundreds of millions of billions of different AI agents, eventually probably more AI agents than there are people in the world. So learning how they work, even if on a conceptual level, is incredibly important. And once you understand them, you can start to build small contained versions of them for yourself. Maybe that's something that just helps you streamline your day-to-day -day life, like my personal training agent. Or maybe it's something that you build and sell to others. Imagine, for example, a local service business like a roofer. They typically have to staff one or two front office employees that just manage things like answering the phone and booking appointments and following up with appointments while the roofer's out in the field doing the work. And they probably spend 70 to 80K a year across two employees to get that job done. And those are tasks that could easily be handled by an agent with the technology that exists right now. Or imagine that personal training agent from earlier that I use just for myself. It makes my life meaningfully better and turns a slightly commoditized research-backed skill and turns it into something that I can just execute on. My own little assistant. So instead of paying $1,500 per month to a personal trainer, I can pay the token cost and hosting cost to run this thing on my own machine. So of all the skills on this list that are going to become more and more relevant in the future for people like you and me, AI app building and AI agent building are going to be 
huge. Now, from a business perspective, no-code automation tools are becoming table stakes, meaning it's only going to differentiate you in the future if you don't have it. It's kind of like the workforce today, where depending on the type of role you're going into, it is a baseline expectation that you have a bachelor's degree, for example. So still valuable to learn, but if you want to be a builder archetype in your life or a high performer in the workplace, it is a 100% base requirement. So look, you've got two choices come 2026. Be the person who can produce value and build leveraging AI or be the person sitting in the corner slowly gathering dust and rust. Because these two groups of skills are quickly becoming non-negotial, not optional. Now, if you're on board with those five capabilities and you want to see more videos about how to specifically tactically implement on those things, well, that's what my channel is mostly dedicated to. So make sure to subscribe to see more videos like that. So don't wait until you're competing for jobs or for opportunity from people that have already mastered this stuff. The time is now. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.